ideas that you've come up with for attracting kids to spend longer in the mall. Just yell out in the sorry. Just yell out the the ideas that have excited you. Entertainment. We've got bubbles, treasure hunt, water, seats they can slide down, and everything playable. Entertainment. Entertainment. Okay. Tactile experience. Tactile experience. Large muscle. Large muscle activities. No, 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 no. Hey, no ideas are off limit. Okay. This, this, is, this is an ideas bank. Uh, flying Fox and Okay, keep going. Finding more. Crazy mirrors. A toilet. We've seen the parents. Yeah, we Really? Playing room and a slightly separate room that can see the playing room with comfortable seating for the older pieces so they don't have to be in amongst them but they can still supervise. And then they'll let their kids stay in office. Yep. Did you get crazy mirrors? Crazy, crazy mirrors. Wow. Yeah, that's great. Can I just say something? So you can every week you move it, move it so the pedestrian flows change. <coughs> Curves, spread screens that have holes in it, so buffets the wind of it, and also artists can you know have, the, have you know make um, designs on that on that metal work, and um, where they're actually posted in uh, various in cir circular sort of ways. So right. you can actually make rooms out of it, but you can also have a fun pedestrian maze that's, that's adaptable and removable okay. and also is used in the, the children's market um, area as well where you can have rooms for that sort of thing going on as well. Yeah. Okay. How about the circus act because that's used a big top. The circus act? Big top. Long top. So you can bring some of the kids in from the schools that you can talk in the space. You can also then use it for uh, other things as well. And, uh, uh, and okay, outdoor uh, classroom. Music. Music. Not the type that's there on at the moment, where I'm assuming. <laughs> that's music. Yeah. I've a couple of ideas. I think you need um, regular small events. So maybe get the local tour library to bring their gear. The kids have got to play with it's free. They come, you're getting advertising, the kids can play that kind of thing. Um, old fashioned games, um, wooden stilts. Set racing, that kind of stuff, lay it out, see what happens, organic please, see what happens. Um, and also, I think kids are more likely to love in an area if they've had a part in making it. So, put out all that old signage that I haven't even noticed, but it's horrible, and get the local schools to paint some new signage. And then the kids are a part of it, a yeah. part of the area, they've created it, and families are definitely about to visit it. Okay, so that raises the idea also of giant games. You can get giant Jenga, giant chess, all the games you can get large chess. What about large scale mobi mobiles on the hand from the young side? You can get your minimum size two meters and make a competition for various schools or any fit array or whatever you have. Big, big, I'm taking advantage of the wind and what have you. Yeah, yeah. The other idea that I was wondering is you shouldn't should have an educational vegetable garden. And you have kids coming in at various times and being told uh, how to grow vegetables, what they look like, and actually see them physically there. Everybody thinks they'll get pinched. 
Wellington City has got them all around in their, in their, in their uh, gardens. gardens around the city now, even in the middle of town. Uh, people can take it once it's mature, but uh, it's, it seems to work extremely well. Yeah, I, and, and that fits perfectly with the market theme. And carrying on from that is like smelling plants as well for young people to go yeah. and touch in the mirror as well. But also from the giant games, I mean, like a projector that projects like different games into the pavement. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uses all the time. yeah. Okay. Uh, regular petting zoo. Petting zoo? Yeah. 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 Fantastic. I, I think we're going to be have to take over somebody else's space here to keep some uh, All right. Okay. All right. Oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Can we blackboard paint the canopies pole, plain white pole, so that kids can actually be part of kids and artists and others can be part of changing what's on them regularly, yeah. so that the, the space changes. Yep. Now, with all, with all of these ideas, we're building an ideas bank, right? We're not. So, just keep the ideas coming. Yeah. Um, I, my, I've got children who ran up bridges, even little bridges. Yeah. So just bridges to walk across, up high bridges. Mm -hmm. And a bridge over the whole you know, thing, so you can walk along and look down. Mm -hmm. Oh, I think that might tie in with an idea up here uh, about the changing the trail, so you can yes. actually change the, where the bridges and are, so etc. Yeah. Yeah. We, um, we talked about producing a uh, kind of a not real stream where you've got the red carpet right. heading towards the real stream and putting bridges across that to give a sense of these locations across the stream to separate the world. Fantastic idea. Um, <coughs> incidentally on that, uh, uh, this is a key point, uh, is we need to get rid of as much signage as possible and replace it with items that tell the story. So something like this that indicates that there is a stream at the other end is just really very positive. Then we'll get rid of a stream site for the sign. It's actually, you know what I'm saying, it's, it's going to be in the... And by the way, if you do decide to put a stream, but I happen to have a paper mache ear library. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, uh, container book library with seating outside, but it is on Auckland waterfront. Yeah. With the carpets outside and the container outside. People put books in, kids read and take them home and bring back some other ones. Fantastic. Yeah. I was thinking um, more like the youth. Um, Having a brick layer, train brick layer, maybe, and um, coming down maybe for once, uh, once a month or once, you know, whatever. And um, uh, people having a trailer there, where a uh, Forest City Council trailer maybe, and people who have old red bricks, say from or bricks from um, their homes, bringing them down into the into the um, onto the trailer. And um, when there's enough, um, having a sort of a workshop or something where the youth can um, actually learn a trade, a little bit of a trade about how to lay bricks, and that, that maybe becomes, as you're talking about, the DNA, like the very initial start of things. Like maybe if there was a fountain or water feature of some sort, maybe that's not using electricity, maybe like a solar power panel or something like this, but these kids are actually learning a bit about the trade. Um, that, you know, and obviously you won't probably won't get much to start with, but yeah. you know, to get the ball rolling. And um, you could either have like a water race where it's narrow and it's pretty safe, you know, especially if it's at different levels of height, yeah. going down or something like that, and um, where they can actually own it themselves. Yeah. All right, look, we'll put that um, idea in the students and creators, I think. There's also fruit trees while I'm talking to fruit trees. Fruit, fruit trees, fruit trees yep. and cities, you know? I think that goes with the sensory trail, mm -hmm. veggie garden, pole, that whole thing. Yep. Yep. I mean, just playing on the stuff that's already there, like the, the campaign breaking up into a tree company and, you know, doing something like getting drilled in more forest involved and, you know, building mini adrenaline forests. Uh, an adrenaline forest? Yeah, yeah. 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 it's like the road. Oh, right, right. So yeah. We kind of use that as like it's a true company. And same with Dog Box Pub. You know, get the SPCA to come down, bring the dogs down for an afternoon so the children can come along and pet them. You know, yeah. just make features of what's already there and show that we don't want to go on high yet, we want to make it. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, you know, like a cubby house hanging off the side of uh, pillars or something? Is that the type of thing you're talking about? Yeah. 
All right. Something that's too strange. Yeah. Really Usually, it also, I think we're wrong. Something with fire. 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 What do we call it, this high risk area? Uh, <laughs> Next on the stream. It's all about the energy Okay. <coughs> I think we'll make this the last one before we move on to the next list. Um, a DJ booth. A yeah. DJ booth? Yeah, that you can come in and um, make, mix your sounds. Yeah. And then it will be around like anybody can do it, so it's, it's still this mm -hmm. music taste. Yeah. And um, that, um, that you can hear it throughout the, the, um, the canopy, so it's sort of Yes, uh, environment yeah. Yeah. <coughs> All right, fantastic. All right, let's move on to the elderly. The kids have taken over the old people's space, but anyway, that's fine. Sorry? Yeah, 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 just, just that, that's right. So, uh, what did you come up with for the elderly? Pedestrian spaces that you can walk at least, like two people in a wheelchair can push side by side with each other. Yeah. If someone a walk an able with a um, someone in the wheelchair. That width needs to be really considered and of course all the entrances and everything very disabled um free disabled free room, you know, like walkers as well. Yep. Yeah, they need to be really wide. And that includes things like having um, tables that maybe are actually stable, wide and that can actually be anchored to it up to the floor. So that they don't move for the elderly, you know, where they, you know, these thin little tables and things are not suitable for the very elderly nor for the very young. Yeah. And so that is really important that every, well, every foodie place that's going to have a table and chairs outside at least has that, if not maybe a footstool even, you know, like anchored there. It's always there, a table and you know, chair yeah. or something like that. Okay. So, so furniture that caters for people with disabilities and elderly. Well. Yeah. Um, uh, Yeah, yeah. The I, I, I think the point of this exercise is that we will come up with ideas. So that idea yeah. goes across the board. That would attract yeah, kids, yeah. Wellingtonians, etc. I was trying to put it elderly because I just thought I had other ideas for the other ones. But what you touched on there, uh, blankets on the chairs and yeah. stuff, I think is, yeah. again, goes across the board. They do it in Europe. It extends the outdoor dining season. So uh, that, in association with an outdoor cinema, would be great. Other ideas? Um, you're talking about blankets, um, you know, young young people are like, like with the knitting and sewing and crocheting and things like that, so bring a community to the <coughs> sit there on the sofas and start knitting. So, you see all these blankets, maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, knitting circles. Um, slightly different, but to scare a lot of the food places prepared to deliver anywhere under the counties. So if people want to go and eat, have coffees, have a meal, that the old, you know, you talk about the council changing the rules, every food place, this is a ridiculous rule, that only food bought here can be eaten here. Mm -hmm. But actually if you turned it around, but the services within the canopies, mm -hmm. or the coffee or whatever, then you can actually, yeah. you know, you talk about homes, well, yeah. the thing that makes a home a home more than anything else is meals. Yeah. And actually if the canopies can become places to share meals, Mm. And it makes people that provide food a lot more available to service, view the whole canopy as their patch. Yeah. Um, that would work. Well, that, 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 works, that works if the council owns 
the facility where they're going to sit. That's right. It doesn't, it doesn't work if you're going to allow people to sit outside the cafe now mm -hmm. with, with Subway food because right. they're paying for that. Well, so that, that I, I, I think that's always the challenge because the irony is if you go next door into the mall, that's why the food court works. Yeah. Is the second area doesn't belong to the retailers. The second yeah. area is for it. Uh, yeah, 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 so what, what I'm saying is that. It's clear yeah. who belongs to the retailers. Yeah. Yeah, or, or belong, yeah. No, it belongs to the people who want to eat. Yeah. 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 But I'm saying that, that, uh, we're with you, and, and, and it, in our mind, what that central market area is, that there should be a whole lot of common tables, right. chairs, and yeah. stuff that anybody can dine anywhere, yeah. no matter where you bought yeah. the food. Yeah. On those tables, so. Yeah, like, I'm just going to say, the original tables as well. There's yeah, I was, I was just going to say, I think for older people, just not not all, but the time that they are in their life, they're often alone. Yeah. And I think you know wow. isolation and, and loneliness, etc., is a big thing. Yeah. And sometimes I see them sitting in the food court with their little roast, and they're sitting on their own. Yeah. And I think some maybe some communal tables where elderly people could just come and all yeah. sort of yeah. pull up the seats. You don't. Take whole tables to yourself, we'll go and sit by yourself at the table. But just maybe for the longer tables, that everybody who's old enough to put their. Like, you know, the people that ask to join you. Yeah. It's an awkward, isn't it? It's awkward for them, it's awkward for you. Yeah. You can actually get some long, sort of, communal seating yeah. if anybody could just roll up to them and sit down. Yeah. That'd be I think that will work extremely well. Uh, other ideas for the elderly? Yeah. Uh, we had two things. I'm trying to help for the walk. We had like the outdoor heaters, the wind shelters, chairs, and canopies, and changing the lighting and allowing sunshine to come in. Well, we also talked about this idea of elderly just being people with Zimmer frames, but actually retired people are actually really active, so having mm -hmm. things that are attractive for them, right. for people who have space as well, and that time. I don't think we should over money problem with the old people. Yeah. Like, I have a drag strip for mobility <laughs> <students. laughs> <laughs> So we're we talking about things like having maybe bocce in there or, or something like that. Is that what you're saying? Oh, what's the other name for it? Bowls. Oh. 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 Yeah, yeah, definitely. Tai Chi. 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 Tai for those guys, so they're thinking, we shall go today with our super golf car, we're going to get on the train, why don't we get off the car and go to the canopy? So something <coughs> quite unique and specific to that place to affect those people. Uh, a history trail. A history trail? It doesn't have to go very far outside the area, but there's a lot of shops that are very walking us in the history trail. It's very painful to go and do this. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just simply make them feel safe. Make them feel safe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think they would like to watch kids that they are playing, so they don't want to be far from people. So one would be a chair or sitting place near kids, and also the another one would be free games, free chairs, or free, free newspaper. They just they get together and talk and have something to start talking and be each other. Right. Oh, let's <laughs> set off the... Uh, <laughs> and I sent them there already. Should that be rethought and reconfigured as more approachable to older people and perhaps extra facilities added as well? Okay. Uh, certainly could be considered. Yeah. We don't like the uh, for education. The people actually have to keep that education. So for uh, uh, opportunities for community education, there's more people with um, experience and knowledge mm -hmm. that they can yeah. get across. <coughs> so tying the two things together of the um, scent gardens and stuff, you could have elderly people who are actually managing the, 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 the garden and giving them this great stuff. Intergenerational transfer of knowledge. Yes, what oh, that's what you said. <laughs> Dancing. Dancing. Wow. Yes. <laughs> 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 
Okay, so somewhere in all of this, I think we need to have a kind of a, a, an events um, display board or something that says on Wednesday is yep. dancing. Yeah. Oh, Thursday, the 10 o'clock is. Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, okay. Whole, whole all right, uh, let's move on to uh, Wellingtonians. Did anybody discuss how we're going to get people from Wellington coming up to do a. a, a Oh, we got <laughs> Here we go. You have involved the main business of Victoria Rua sponsors sculptures, so I think you have a really good chocolate sculpture, you know, and that sort of thing. And then we get three sculptures. We have photographs and so on, and that sort of thing. Right. So there's a lot of major businesses. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay, uh, Marjorie? So you've got hugely diverse communities here who um, provide interesting foods for people yeah, yeah, to come up. So have a food night food market. That's quite well. That's yeah. quite well in uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wellington. We could do better than that. Mm. Oh, great. Yeah. yeah. Go going on what was down there this morning, I think you that that and on the experience of um, Eat Street in Brisbane, uh, and that just basically is um, everybody goes there from like half past five till nine o'clock, and there's just this huge diversity of food. And you said the space is quite wide, and if the shops themselves are actually shut at night, there's plenty of space for um, you know, all sorts of set up. Yeah, okay, great. Just taking on the idea of the elephant classroom. Uh, that our population is so diverse. Could we have a Pacific Island sh shelter stroke, Maori stroke structure in the middle, a bit like the Christmas markets overseas, it seems, and almost like a, a giant garden shed. But it would be a training room, it would be a meeting room, it would represent our culture, uh, quite sexy to sponsor as well for the businesses. Uh, and it would actually give some scale under the canopies. Yeah, okay, so training room. I think uh, what's just well, Wellington and here is a cheapest product than Wellington mm -hmm. and drivers. So they, they just come here because they have lots of things in Wellington. They will come here for something probably even cheaper or have more diverse products. So they just, you know, they, they will come here. Okay, well that, that kind of fits in, I, I think, uh, fits into the uh, cheap night mark, food night mark for the diversity of food. Yeah, you? Right. Some of the buildings there are two storeys already. Will there be more two storey buildings? And is there any earthquake screens on it? Will be down in there um, are you suggesting we get Wellingtonians up to do the earthquake strengthening? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just uh, trying to make the connection here. <laughs> Oh, we'll leave that as a question on the, yep. Um, I asked my 20 year old daughter and she said pop-up shops and we also talked here about craft beer pop-up shop, you yeah. know, get some of that Wellington action out here um, and uh, with the night market, I go to that night market in Cuba Street, it awesome, you know, and we would so rock that, we would do way better with our night market because of all the different ethnic foods we have out here. Yeah. We've learned from Christchurch perhaps in some of this. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Oh, sorry. As well, I'm Tony and I was saying, I would definitely come out for things like yes. Yogi and like a craft beer retailer, have you know, tours through their space or have lots of art <coughs> shops. It's about thinking what's interesting for them, but having like, you know, like a weekend event or craft stuff or something like that. But we also had a great idea around the museum trail. Um, 
Um, well, you can use the museum um, as a starting point, and then if um, filling empty shops with like, pieces that come in with an ex ex exhibition that's happening, mm -hmm. and, uh, and encouraging some cross promotion kind of happening. Kind of like kind of like that. And like, wow, like, wow, in Washington, because if they got there, they also have those shops allow some of their space and rest it up, and those shops are actually doing really well. Yeah. All right. Just on that um, DJ booth, another thing that they do in Wellington, spontaneously, in the Ara Valley, is you just walking back home, having been to the night market, and there's DJ booth there, and there's this guy putting lots of great sounds out, and there's people dancing. It's fantastic. So the dancing and the DJs, they would go to so well. Yeah. Okay. Other things for attracting Wellingtonians? Oh, just, just listening to all this, the focus to me is going the wrong way. Our, what we have out here is unique that Wellington does not have. We have this culture base, we have these talented people with incredible art skills. Wellington doesn't have that. It's <laughs> <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't have that the Polynesian depth of art. The depth. And we should be milking that in all these ideas under the counter. Yeah, yeah. Not trying to replicate what's happening in Wellington. Yeah. I hear you. I hear you. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the, the question is about how we attract them out. So it's a good piece of. No, no, no. We can. We can have that. Yeah. We could own Matari. Yeah. Okay. Um, we don't. Oh, own sorry. No, we could. We should. Own no, no one else. No one else. We should. We should own it. We should. 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 We yeah. of the touristy market. Yeah. They are all outdoors, but they are very, very successful. Whatever you say about yeah. that, despite the weather, they are still successful. But when the weather's very nice, it's just, you know, it's a great space to be out there. So here you have covered space, just make use of it. Yeah. But I think to bring up Wellingtonian, I'm, I live in Wellington. I wouldn't come up here in the night because it'll take me an hour. It normally takes me 20 minutes during peak hour. So I think about that. Maybe it's the weekends that we might have to use um, to make the space you know, but yeah. more attractive for one to come up to yeah. and spend the day there. Yeah. And that's yeah, just going to be the outer reading as well. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> I'm a grandfather, and I've got, I've got to say that since my young grand is, I love travelling on the train. And mm -hmm. the distance between well and mother and Emporia is the perfect distance to take young kids on the train. So maybe there should be a special event sent out to the old grandparents or old parents to bring these kids for a day trip to the train and a whole of things organised around the canopies, around other things, would make, make it a good It's such a short walk from the station yeah. through to where, where you want it to be, and I think you could, you've got parking there, there's a whole lot of things in the area, but you could do, if you're doing something special under the canopies, I think that would be a winner. Fantastic. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. I think we should try and get the circus school to relocate from Wellington because it's got the biggest big top in the region. <laughs> okay, let's uh, all right, uh, let's let's move on. Um, retailers, um, how are we going to uh, uh, and I, I'm thinking uh, with, with the retailers about not just retailers to the empty shops but the retailers that are going to, um, you've talked about, you know, your craft beer and, and whatever. Is there anything that we can do other than what we've already talked about to attract those people? Um, have the travel agent owner next to me build a beach outside his premises? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> the trailer load of sand and the palm tree and the cabin pool. Fantastic. I was just thinking, um, um, there's 2,000 people in Pori Rua who are still employed and work from home. You need to get those people out of their homes and have a, a business hub or a business centre. Yeah. It has been talked about already, you know, it's been boring, but perhaps that could be um, 
placed uh, under the um, canopies. Yeah. Um, and, and business transactions and dealings can take mm. place. And, yeah. And link it with Wi Fi as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Try and make at least part of it feel like a soup or a bazaar because you, you go overseas and you have these amazing ancient retail spaces that are about open sided tents, not closed buildings. Mm. And we've got the space in there that you, you could actually do some of it. Oh, I don't know who else seen that YouTube video of a bazaar somewhere in Africa, the trains pass through. And essentially, the tents go up like a zip. The train goes out, and then the tents go back down. The market continues. <laughs> yeah, you know, we've got to ask about face. <laughs> okay. All right. Um, That's probably enough one. One, three uh, people are considered high end specialty shops. Yeah. Uh, you know, whether, whether the, I don't know. We seem to have all the basic retailers in Porto City, but do we have a high end? Shop. Do we have a high-end craft shop? Do we have a high-end? And that's sort of, and that's going to bring people in from all over because it becomes their destination. Yeah. Can I just add to that? So the, I think Thomas is right that these have to be particular kinds of retailers. They have to be the ones that actually are destinations in their own right. Yeah. And ideally, they will be ones that have some back-end distribution activity which means that they're viable even if people aren't walking past their shop and coming in every day. So you talked about a craft brewer, for example. Their back-end distribution is going to keep them going, whether people come in the front door or not. Right. Um, the florist shop that's down there, she does really well because she's able to actually send out floristry you know, to all the people who contracted to provide that activity. Yeah. So it's, it's a particular kind of destination retailer yeah. uh, with distribution attached, yeah. which, we, which we need to check. Uh, good coffee. Good coffee. Good coffee. Yeah. Yeah, what's that coffee to you? <laughs> different to what good coffee is to me. Exactly. So you need about 10 different types of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I think that might be outside of our 12-week uh, window of uh, things that we can do. But, uh, you, you need our trusty your computer's going to die. Solar panel. Solar panel. I forgot to... Um, I'm now caught in. Retail is good because they're all short conditions. I can still have a window. Yeah. Okay, let's just do, uh, I, I think one that I'd just like to um, test that. Is, is there any additional ideas that people came up with for attracting people? I think we've really kind of done this one almost to death. I'll tell you what I used to the Tiara Moor and the Long Trail. Yeah. Well, it's news to me as well. But apparently, apparently there's a sign down there that says this way. So there's a sign. It's a John Key should be fun. All right. <laughs> what? 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 The last one, perhaps. The one thing that made Wellington move, uh, and it, was, it used to have a very, very deep centre as well, was having uh, residents living in the heart of the town. Yeah. And the price has been raised before. At the moment, I know it would be very difficult. It's hard to see what would attract people that you set up residence right behind the top of the urban centre at the moment. But that could change quite quickly. And there is actually no doubt in my mind that I mean, neither in the heart of town nor the part of it, there's, there's a huge number of people now living in the middle of town, and that's what actually is in real life. And it would be great that the council could, over a period of time, have a vision that is going to try and produce attractions. Maybe some of those people now be converted to residents and 
deals with a lot of vacancy issues. And, and once you get a few people started the end, they go and reach the chief and you can start justifying new bills. I know the council's looking at that. I know the rejuvenation fees looking at it. Uh, but I'm just saying it's, it's one thing that I think is very important for the future. Okay. Now, I, I think what's happening right now is we've kind of exhausted all of the quick win stuff and we're kind of starting to move out into the longer term uh, thing. So let's, let's move on and have you discuss at your table. Um, let me reopen this. <coughs> Shoppers and office workers, very quickly. Copy that. Copy. Copy and see. Copy the office workers. Yeah. And the Wi Fi goes under there. Yeah. Yeah. Heat pumps. Stand under some heat. Yeah. All righty. So, I, 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 my pictures disappear for a minute. Uh, let's get you working on some ideas. Um, for breaking the space up into more intimate spaces. So remember we said one of the things we need to do and get a uh, yeah, more intimate spaces where the ceiling, remember we had that, uh, we gave the example of the goal of it, it could be, be anything. So some ideas for whether you think just putting the grass in and we leave those as flexible spaces, what kind of structures, um, so if you can have a brainstorm, I think about that, and then we'll have a report back on that.